Oh, you died. Uh, which I did a lot. I have died a lot. Um, yeah, this is my Elden Ring Shadow of the Year Tree DLC review. Um, I love it. It's so good. There we go. That's the review part. <laughs> no, um, uh, um, I think it is my game of the year. I mean, do we count DLC as games of the year? Because if it do, if we do, it's my game of the year. It's a Ooh, ten out of ten. Well, it depends because it depends on the DLC. It's like I know it's not a standalone game, but I think it's just yeah. like like is it gonna does it offer like forty or sixty hours of gameplay in it? Yes, yes, I can see you northern, so yes. I think you can count that as a game. So it just seems it's, like you really enjoy it. For me, oh, it's brilliant. I haven't actually owned Elder Green, and I don't know Ooh. if it even is coming to Game Pass. But I think the DLC no. is just like more of an expansion pack than the, just a yes. little DLC. Like a ship, oh, yeah. uh, Shadow of a Tree or some sort is to Elden Ring, as the Ship in the Isles, Isles is to Oblivion, or if you put it in the Skyrim terms, uh, I think it was a Blood Moon? No, no, there's Dragonborn yeah. to uh, El Elder Scrolls V uh, Skyrim. I think I'll put it right. Yeah. I mean, this DLC is gigantic. So basically, the base game is massive. I would say this is about. 75% of the big scale hmm. size. Ooh. It's like nearly the same size as the base game when it like the map for this new DLC. Uh there's so many bosses and so many places to go. The map is huge. Essentially it feels like I was playing Elder Ring again for the first time. Like it felt like I was playing a new game. I've I've put like 40, 50 hours into it. I'm on the last boss and it keeps kicking my ass. <laughs> um, I'm struggling with it. Um, I play it as a mage, which a lot of people call baby mode, or they say, "Oh, you noob, you use summons and you're a mage." Ugh. But I love being a mage. I just I can make my heart stuff. I just go Whoosh! and I fire a laser beam at it and blow it up. The coolest thing ever. But I can't beat this last boss. Um, I beat be every other boss in the. You must be carrying well, some onions because you really make them quiet over being a mage. But then I think yeah. that's what you get with Mage and Onion. Quite a bit of a stuff yeah. in there, isn't it? Oh god. Oh god, that's a terrible pun. That's a terrible pun. <laughs> but yeah, um but yeah, I love I love Elder Ring, it's so good. And people will complain about it being too hard. I uh, um and this is gonna be ironic coming from me, but get good. God, it's not that hard. It's like it's about as hard as the base game. The main, the final boss, and the final few bosses are very <laughs> difficult. But the, there's a there's a thing in there called uh, scattered tree segments or skidoo trees, as I like to call them, which are like collectibles that you collect that increase your, your stats. So you need to collect them before you basically go back into the game. And there's also ash uh, fragments which you need to upgrade your summons. Uh, if you don't upgrade them, then you're going to get killed. It's essentially people are mad because they had the level 900 character with maximum stats and they go into the DLC and they get killed. It's because they haven't leveled up. You have to level it up again in the new DLC. Oh, and like again, the prestige. Essentially, yeah. It's like you basically level it up again by collecting these scatter tree segment, segments, essentially. I'm max level when it comes to strategy segments and ashes. As I said, I'm on the final boss, max level. And I get to the second phase, and then he kills me straight away. His health bar gets about halfway, <laughs> then he just kills me. <laughs> so it's very annoying, uh, but I still love it. It's still my game of the year so far. I would give it a 10 out of 10. You know, um, I think in Minecraft terms, um, I think it just kind of feels like in Minecraft, you got all the diamond armor, you get through the mm -hmm. nether fortress, and you manage to beat the ender dragon at the end. And then the, the update comes up, and it's like, Oh, you got bastions. Be careful because the piglin brutes can like literally kill you in a few hits. Or if you're playing them yeah. hard, they will almost kill you in one hit. And I just feel I mean, like I the way you breath. described it kind of yeah. like reflects this experience. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. It feel like you are starting from scratch. But I don't see why people would want to get a DLC where they could literally kill everything in one shot and they'll be done in like t like an hour or two why would you want that like is this is elden ring you want a trick you want to have a challenge surely 
Uh, I found it really hard in parts, but I enjoyed it for the most part. This is the game that's made me swear and scream the most. I in my entire, like probably in my entire life. I uh, I've lost track how many times I've just gone you beep beep beep, <laughs> like just just go on and, sw- and uh, throw my controller and all this stuff. I like this game makes you very angry, but when you, you beat you, something, did you throw your controller rewarding. over? No, I, I don't do that. But I swear a lot. <laughs> I can't, I, I, I'm not one of those people who throws the control out. I was like, I'd be like, mm. <laughs> like I, 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 I find my, I, I love my, my consoles too much. I couldn't damage them. But yeah, it's really hard. I could get really angry. Um, so what I was going to say earlier is, as well is that the best way to show how much I love this game is, I was saying earlier to you, I'm like OCD and I play lots of different things. I usually have like five or six games going on at a time. As soon as I downloaded this, I that's all I played until I got to the final boss. I literally all I played. I didn't play anything else. And I, I'm one of those people who plays lots of different things because I get bored easily. But I was just obsessed. I was obsessed with the DLC. Like Elden Ring, the base game, is in my top 10 games of all time. The DLC is in there as well. If you count the, uh, the, it's in my top 10 games. This is one of my favorite games of all time. And the DLC is incredible. I really love it. And I'm not really much of a Souls person. I, I have Demon Souls, I have Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, and, and Bloodborne, and I've never beaten any of them. I've never got that far into them. But this one, because it's an open world and it's a fast, and I find the world fascinating and really interesting and like cool to explore, uh, I've got a lot further in it, and I've beaten the base game, and I've be- I've almost beaten the DLC since I'm on the last boss. I just can't beat him, but I, I basically, this is my favorite Souls game by a land, by a mile, a mile, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it's up there with Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom for me is one of the best open world games I've ever played. Uh, and they both came out with like, it's crazy because they uh, like had Elden Ring and then the year after I had Tears of the Kingdom and now I got Elden Ring again. <laughs> it's like, it's <laughs> like, whoa. Um, I think this year is going to be an interesting year when it comes to DLC, when it comes to our Game of the Year discussions because I'm hoping Shattered Space is going to be really good as well. And then there's like, so that's like two DLCs I'm going to be talking about at the end of the year, I think, which is kind of crazy because I don't normally play DLCs, but this is, this is the, I mean, I think this, in Metacritic, this is the highest reviewed DLC of all time. I think that's what they said. So and I, I agree with that. This is the best DLC I've ever played. Uh, this is essentially another game. This is essentially Elden Ring 2, hmm. essentially. This is basically Elden Ring 2. And I love it. It's so good, and uh, I highly recommend it. If you and if you even if, if you don't like Souls games, you're scared of Souls games. I don't blame you because I I struggle with them as well. But try being a mage, try using summons, and you'll enjoy it. I, I, I'm sure you'll enjoy it because I loved it, and that's how I played it. And uh, there's ways to play the game where it's not brutally punishing, and it's still challenging enough that it's fun. So I'm sure you can do it. I, rec- I recommend it to everyone. I've, I think it's, the, it's the, one of the best games I've ever played. And 10 out of 10! I know I give 10 out of 10s a lot, but this one deserves it. I was thinking of giving it a 9 out of 10 because like, I feel like I give away too many 10 out of 10s, but I can't. I can't in good conscience not give this a 10 out of 10. I it's do wonder what will happen if you get to Starfield Shattered Space, if it ever releases at all. <laughs> it should be coming. I don't think that's going to be a 10 out of 10 shattered space, but I'm looking forward to it for sure because I love Starfield. Um, I prefer the Elden Ring to base Starfield, so I'm assuming that I'll prefer the Shadow of the Earth DLC to the shattered space expansion. But you don't know. You never know. You never know. The shattered space expansion might be the best thing I've ever played ever. Um, but yeah, I still love Starfield. I know that's sort of changed the subject a little bit, but I still love Starfield a lot, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, I can't see this not being my game of the year unless we don't count DLCs and then I'll have to come up with something else. But if you count DLCs, I think this is going to be my game of the year. I can't see anything else beating it, honestly. It's uh, that good. And the most annoying thing is the Davey from me and PS3 Trust has beaten the final boss and it's like, I want your help, Davey! And it's like, I can't help you because it's not cross-save. It's like, or cross-play. I'm like, no! 
I can't beat this thing on my own. Oh, I need help. I need help badly. Um, but yeah, if you if you that's a good point. If you guys want, if any of you were playing Elden Ring DLC on Xbox and you got to the final boss and you can beat the final boss, please help me. I will summon you and you can help me and I'll, I'll give you a shout out in the next podcast. I really need help, please. <laughs> I want to beat this boss. I've fucking, I've died on him like 20 times. It's like maybe more than that. Hopefully it's crazy. Would, hopefully you wouldn't end up with just like a red herring with chips. <laughs> What's this one? I'm trying to get the, I'm trying to get the, what that pun is. <laughs> Potato chips. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I see. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, I think that's it, really, I wanted to say. I'm sure there's probably more on... I, I didn't want to go into spoilers. Like, I could talk about bosses and characters and stuff that you come across, but I don't want to spoil the game, so I want to try and keep it as vague as I can. Uh, it's great. It's some bits are really hard and brutally hard, like they're like some of the hardest things I've ever done in a video game. Uh, and I beat Melania in the base game, mm. <laughs> and she, so like uh, this game is brutal. So obviously, if like I think they said like statistically, eighty percent of people who played Elder Ring never beat Mog, which is the entrance to the DLC. So only like twenty percent of people who've played Elder Ring have access to the DLC area. Because <laughs> you have to beat the boss Mog, which is more like a late game boss to get to this air, to this DLC, which is hilarious. Uh, so yeah, good luck, good luck, Tarnished, my fellow Tarnished. Please check it out. If you haven't played Elder Ring the base game, go check it out. It's worth it. And if you have played the base game and you loved it, check the DLC out because you're just bored for the same. And it's worth it. 40 quid, no microtransactions, no battle passes, nothing like that. It's literally just no like skate, custom skins you have to pay for. You pay 40 quid and you get the lot. And it's just, it's more value for money than some ba- some fully priced games. And it's just a DLC, which is crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, there's games I've paid 70 quid for that have been less value for money than this. So, worth it, totally. Great. I think that's my review. <laughs> ten out of ten. Well, ten out of ten. <laughs> bear in mind that I haven't played the Elder Ring. I haven't checked out the DLC, so I think it's just quite literally you just like saying about it. But I think so far is that, from what I gather, is that those who enjoy the Elden Ring will end up enjoying the DLC because I think it just continues yeah. the gameplay grind with lots yes. of different fresh content and everything. So I think. For those who actually enjoyed Elden Ring, will end up enjoying Elden Ring's DLC, which is Shadow of the Tree or some sort? Shadow of the Year Tree, yeah. As I said, this is essentially Elden Ring 2 or Elden Ring 1.5. This is more I of what see. you loved. Yeah, it's just it's literally 1.5, so... But yeah, anyway, definitely. that's really good. And nice that you just talked about it. So I love it. Thank you for listening to the X Marks the Box podcast. Follow us at X Marks Box on Twitter or X Marks the Box on YouTube. And follow us on all audio podcast services. Thanks for listening. <laughs>